recording and start streaming now. So I'm, I'm blocking your audio and mine. So, but we can still talk I... though.
Welcome everyone to the first official Uncle Leroy's podcast after hours special. Today my guest is uh, a very good friend of mine, Sprinkles, and we're going to be celebrating Anime Week by kicking it off with this podcast. Well, technically we did something yesterday with the live stream that failed miserably, but (laughs) other than that, you know. What happened with that again? So, yesterday's uh, little fiasco um, ended up being... so. Some of the games out there, especially the ones from Japan, uh, decide that they don't want you to be able to record the cutscenes. So, a lot yesterday, I kept missing the cutscenes, and it was just driving me absolutely batshit. Like, I really couldn't, like, show you guys the cutscenes from the game, but mind you, I'm just trying to show you guys the combat from the game. But, it was just so bad. So, it just was like, oh my god, black screens, that's why that, that will not be going up on YouTube at all. (laughs) So, Makes sense. Yes. So also today, so today's podcast is going to be this is, like so. This is our first all, first official after hours special. Uh, we've done after hours before, like you know, after a few drinks, <laughs> and and try to keep going on with the conversation, half in the bag, but or just really late night. So this we're gonna do an official one. Um, as of right now, our topics for today is well, I'm gonna bring up our. Uh, the winner for the poll on the Facebook group for Uncle Leroy Plays and our Discord as well uh, for the Fiji Gadget Lab Discord. Uh, I will be announcing the winner of the game that won at the end of the podcast. Um, but first, Sprinkles and I can discuss some of his and, and, and mostly his favorite animes, but some, are, some that I really, really enjoy too. Actually, the first one we're going to discuss is actually one that we both thoroughly enjoy. And that's going to be Steins Gate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to start us off? I mean, the best way to introduce this is the whole reason why we have a podcast called the Future Gadget Labs and a Discord and we and you have designated numbers is because of this anime. This anime really is <clears throat> just phenomenal. Just phenomenal anime. Uh, would you like to explain what's about Sprinkles? Um... I'll just dumb it down so I don't take up too much time. Yeah, it's, it's one hell of a ride. <laughs> Basically, uh, quote-unquote mad scientist named Okabe, or Hoeyin Kiyoma, as he likes to be called. Hoeyin Kiyoma. Likes, uh, starts to discover something about time travel, goes back in time, and fucks up the timeline and has to fix it. So, like, really fucks it up and... And fixing it for him is extremely brutal, extremely brutal experience because he believed throughout the show, throughout the first series, that he was fixing, you know, people's problems and helping them out. Turns out it was making the timeline worse and worse and worse and causing one little thing that he was trying to to stop to still happen. So it gets really really grandiose. Oh, my God. It gets really crazy. And then, of course, the series got so popular that they made a movie and then a sequel series called Steins Gate Zero, which I absolutely love that series, too, almost as much as, as the original. So, almost as much. And for our viewers that do not know this also, is that Steins Gate, before it was an anime, it was a visual novel. Oh, yeah. A very crazy visual novel. Um, they've actually remade the visual novel for the PS4, Switch, and um, PC called Steins Gate Elite by taking uh, footage from the actual anime and putting it on there, which makes it enjoyable to play, but unless you're really into visual novels, it's kind of hard to really sit down and play the game. I've had the game for almost two years now, um, but probably, actually probably a year and a half now, and it's, I'm still like at the very beginning of it because it just takes so long to get through it it's just a very long visual and there's novel. no option to skip through a lot of stuff either no there really isn't and Steins Gate Zero it's sequel is the same way too it's long and I'm actually I kind of hope they do an elite for that too but they were, I do quite enjoy the original artwork they had for Steins Gate as well as, as the anime 
But um, <clears throat> a, a, a quick funny story about this anime. Well, not funny, but how I got my hands on was actually because of Sprinkles. He kept saying, you need to watch this, you need to watch this. To the point where he actually lent me his copy, left it in my car, and made sure I said, I think he even tricked me. He said, hey, dude, I, I think I left, that in my, I left that in your car. Make sure you watch it. A plan succeeded. Yeah. So, <laughs> for people who might be interested in watching this anime, which I highly recommend, it's in my top four. And I say top four, meaning the, meaning it's in my top two. <laughs> um, <laughs> because my, my, my top... Two favorite, my top favorite anime of all time is tied between two animes. My second one is tied between two animes because I can't decide. That's how much I love those four animes. Um, but it was kind of funny because I wasn't really expecting much out of the anime, and I watched the first couple episodes, and it was it, it was kind of funny. It was kind of like, okay, what's going on here? And then I remember I was sitting down playing a game on my laptop, and then that one episode that changes everything came on. I think, I think it's like, like episode seven. Yeah, it's like seven episodes in, something like that, either seven or eight. And I was like, holy fuck, what is going on here? Dude, it just went from zero to 100, like, real fast. Yeah, and a lot of people, I tell people it's a slow burn at first, but once you get to that burn part, oh my friggin' god. You're, you're, you're off and running, you're off and running with this anime. And it's just such a well-written anime and visual novel. I mean, I, I, I personally can't recommend it enough. I mean, thank you for, for showing me this anime because it's literally hell. We we need a whole podcast off of it. That's, that's how much you know me, you, and Lobo love this anime. Oh yeah. Uh, what else? Like, my favorite character is probably the main character because he's just so eccentric and he's Okabe's funny. Okabe's amazing. Yes. Um, it's Hoi and Kilma. It's Hoi and Kilma. Don't call him by my slave name. Yeah. Any dabs too? I almost forgot about that. Oh yeah, dude. The 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 little chemistry between him and Christina, quote unquote. Um, uh, what's the hell is her is her name? Freaking, Makase uh, Kurasu. Yeah, Kurasu. Um, as people who don't know at home, I'm horrible at remembering names for characters. They could be my favorite character. I can always forget their fucking name. But, oh my god, I hate to see you watch Bleach then. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no thanks. I'll, I think I'll take a hard pass on that one again. I mean, it's it's good, don't get me wrong, once you get past the filler, but like, try to remember names, dude. Like, one of them is like, Shunshi Karaku, the other one's Byakia Kuchki, and you're just like, oh, how do I remember this? Yeah, I have a hard time pr- remembering names that are from other, you know, j- Japanese <laughs> culture, and th- to begin with, it's just, oh my god. But... <laughs> I mean, Kurosu is a very interesting backstory as well, especially with her relationship with her father. And also just the, the interaction between the both of them is just freaking hilarious, which makes the rest of the series that they do even better. Between um, between Zero, uh, the movie, and even, even the side stuff that they do, uh, I guess the visual novel has a lot of side um, quests, and not quests, but a lot of side stories too, like... Uh, I haven't played it yet, but I have it on my PS4. I think you might have it too for your Switch. Called I do. A Linear Bound Program. It's like a, a I second. haven't seen it all. I haven't even got a chance to even touch it yet because, like I said, because of that. But kind of busy. It, yeah. It's just Playing a game. I think every character in this anime was very, extremely well written and extremely well, well thought out. I mean, God. It's not even about the characters to me. I think it's about like how like well it pieces itself together. Oh yeah, definitely. It's just like each little piece. I mean, literally, this anime you can watch this anime twice, and you'll notice stuff at the very beginning of the anime that was mentioned like towards the end. Like every single time you watch it, you'll find something new. Yeah, it's something that you can see that Okabe was in a certain part of, of the timeline in some place, or someone else was, and it was mentioned later on this. Or anime. like things that didn't make sense before, and you go rewatch it again. Okay, so. For those viewers, I think it's like probably like what the first three episodes. It seems boring and it makes no sense. But keep in mind, those are the most like important episodes. Yeah, they definitely are. That make they make the the rest of the of the show. Uh, well, it's very just important to the rest of the show afterwards. You when you go through, you're like what the hell do they mean? And then you go back and rewatch those first three episodes. You're like, oh, now I see what the hell is going on. Oh yeah, and it's just like. When when the, when that certain episode hits, it goes from zero to one hundred real fast. Like oh, it yeah. ain't like you know super small. Like they they put it in your face, and you're like, wait, what? You did nobody expected it. If you did, I call you a liar. 
Yeah, exactly. Because I did not expect that at all. I expected full blown like the more lesser of, of severe circumstances to happen than what it actually happened, and it really made it, it made you go, "Wait, what?" Like really, I I, I, I had, and the problem is if you if we try to explain what happened, it spoils it. Cause it's like the like, I will plot. hardcore spoil it. Oh yeah, because we're gonna on a tangent about how th this anime is. I mean, you know, I can always do like a review episode one day, just fill the spoilers about what we felt about certain parts of the anime, and then you need to watch Zero. I know you haven't watched it yet, but it's it ties everything together. It's so yeah. Good. I heard it delves deep in that set uh, in one of the set episodes that I did not give away for spoils. Yeah, it really delves deep, and the whole anime is always about timelines and skipping between timelines. And well, sorry, world lines, and that and the zero is just a, um, it's an just, alternate world line. Yeah, it, it, it's I think it's the C world line, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, but it's just very well done too. Okabe is a very depressed character throughout the entire show, and just seeing him, uh, not to give away too much, just seeing him go through everything he has to go through to get back to being the guy who sent that. D mail the very end of the first Dines Gate. Just seeing him get to that point is fantastic. It's just a great way. It's a great way to if they, they don't do anything for the series after that, Zero is a perfect way to, to send the series off. And please do not watch Zero, then watch the original because you'll uh yeah. extremely confused. It isn't like Fate Zero or like any other show that says Zero. It's it's the letter Zero for, for a reason. <laughs> not the word Zero. So. The movie's pretty good, too. I think the movie does a great job wrapping things up, but it's just like the ending in the movie leaves you a lot of questions, but I think that's where Zero comes in to fix some of them. Uh, it does, and, and Zero, even the ending of Zero, like, it, it definitely closes out the series. Like, if you were to choose, uh, if, if if the makers of Steins Gate would turn around tomorrow and be like, you know what, we're not going to do anything else with the series then they would have done this whole series justice anyways. Like, they would, there's not really much they can do. I mean, the only other thing I saw from recently that they're doing, they made Hello Kitty a lab member. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, I was like, what the hell? So, uh, for people who don't know, it's the creators of Steins Gate decided to do a 10 things for the, the 10th anniversary of Steins Gate, the 10, 10 announcements, and the most recent one was the, a bunch of them were like, um, festivals and stuff like that the, the the I think the voice actors and creators were making appearances and that they hadn't done in a very long time about just about Steins Gate and then the newest one was the Hello Kitty one which I thought was pretty funny I'm really hoping the end of the year announcement is either a another anime I mean this is all based in the same world it was just a bunch of other um, stuff of animes and well two other animes in the uh, science, science adventure series. I mean, we have R Roblox Notes and Chaos Head and Chaos Child. As well. Chaos Head is said to be really bad. But the anime. So people say, I, I've seen the anime. I don't think it's that bad, but it's not as good as, as the, the visual novel. So I've heard it connects to the, the timeline stuff and it makes it kind of more confusing. Yeah. Chaos Child is pretty good, though. I did quite enjoy that one. So I heard uh, Robotic Notes... Uh, it's pretty good. Like it's it's completely different from the Steins Gate mythos, but I was just like, all right, it's got a nice thing that doesn't have to focus on it. Yeah, but it doesn't also have uh, Mr. Braun for, from Steins Gate in it too. And the and the, his daughter. Yeah, so it's set in the. And they're all world. grown. Oh, she's all grown up. Yeah, so it's definitely in the future of Steins Gate, which is pretty. Like they appear, but it's only like I think uh, like five minutes or some shit. Yeah, just kind of tie everything together. Uh, the other thing too about Steins Gate is just it's just a huge undertaking. They took this this well, like I guess you could say it's about a lot of animes, but that came from visual novels. They took the novels, the visual novel, and tried to turn it into a masterpiece anime. Which I think Steins Gate is one of the few that did that. The only other one like very close to it, and actually finally closing out the final route in their visual novel is Face Day Night. Um, they're closing out with Heaven's Feel 3 this year, and that just closes out all three routes yeah. in the Fate State Night, which is, I highly recommend anyone who hasn't seen the Fate series to watch. It's fantastic. Yeah, I haven't seen it. It's brutal, though. It's like, you really, you really, your heart is really wrenching through like the Unlimited Blade Works and uh, Heaven's Feel. The first, uh, Steins, the first uh, Fate's Day 
Knight isn't that bad. I mean, he has some scenes, but he goes face. If you're gonna watch it, watch Fate Zero, Fate Zero Knight, Fate Zero and Little Blade Works, then watch the Heaven's Field movies. That's the order I believe you should, you should watch it in. But I think we should probably move on to something else before we start rambling on more about Steins Gate. Oh yeah. Definitely. So what's our next topic? Uh, well, well h how about this? Why don't you tell the viewers what is the first? What's the anime that got you? into watching anime what, what's the first one that got you to start watching it like on, i mean full time the, the primary one is naruto i grew up with it when it first came out when it was on you know toonami cartoon network the good old days and toonami was good yeah ah, like toonami's not bad now it's just that you know who's gonna stay up until two in the morning yeah that's true well the other thing too is like you and i kind of grew up in slightly different generations of toonami like like i remember when i first saw naruto it was a in a shonen jump magazine that i got for a subscription one year for christmas and i i and i would read the, read the manga pretty much through that before it actually came out in the us and then next thing i know it's all over freaking toonami along with uh one piece too i think at the same time because they're both in Sh Show and Jump, and I, I I like the manga. I don't really get, I didn't really, don't really watch the show too much, but uh, I mean, if you would give it a shot, you should. Oh yeah. I think it's so, just that you know it's really long, but then again, I've said to since the beginning. And yeah. See, it's, it's, it's not like I'm watching One Piece and I'm wasting my life. Oh my yeah, god! Fight me, One Piece fans. <laughs> <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed the One Piece manga. But I cannot sit through. Like it's the same thing with One Piece, Fairy Tale, and Naruto. Those really long running animes, they're great for a reason. Like they're they're good animes. Like I'm not gonna shit on them, but you know they're super I'll long. I'll shit on DBZ. <laughs> but in Dragon Ball Z too, in the whole Dragon Ball franchise too, they're really long running. And the problem is that for for new for new watchers, you know, you well, new viewers, you really have to st really have to try to jump ahead and people. To take them a year, especially with One Piece, just to try to get caught up. And I that, know. Nine hundred plus anyway. episodes. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, no. <laughs> at, at least with Naruto, it stopped at a certain point and then had a had a sequel, and the, and then another sequel, right? It had the two sequels it had Shopen or Shopen, and then it had uh, Boruto, right? Yeah, Naruto Shippuden tells the story of what happens when Naruto leaves to go to his training for two, two after two years, and he comes back, and Boruto's kind of trash. Okay. And it has a spinoff show called uh, Rock Lee's Adventures, which is just a parody of Naruto. They, like, over-exaggerate everybody in the most hysterical way. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's just a comedy. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, what about... Now, what about Naruto got you to really, like... Now, what, what about the show made you, like, say, oh, I love anime now because of this? Like, what about it got you, like, hooked on it? I mean, that was... It was only, that was the first one. The other one was, um... Hold on. Give me a second. Which one did I watch? Well, when I was... It was an anime that I finished. I'm still trying to find the complete series. I think it was called either Blackjack, I think. And it was told about the story of a doctor who tries to solve uh, diseases that are completely complex and complicated. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Naruto got me hooked because, you know, I when I was in middle school, I, there's this group of people I would not really hang out with, but I would associate because they watch anime, and you know, they're like, anime elitist. Like, huh, Naruto's not even real anime. I'm watch, I'm reading the manga, so I'm already ahead, like, trying to one-up you with this big dick energy. And you're like, yeah, okay, cool, kid. Uh, <laughs> and they tell me to watch all these other animes, and I guess the other anime I'd watch is probably, like, whatever's on Netflix at the time. And keep in mind, Netflix back in the day was, like, really small. Yeah. Yes, it was. And the anime I saw was Rosaria Vampire, which we'll get into later. Yeah, actually, that that's actually our next um, our next one we're going to segue into. Actually, is is Rosaria Vampire, some anime both you and I both enjoy. Oh uh, yeah, even the manga is better, but you know oh, yeah. you still have to read it, and I have so, to give you it because I have all. <laughs> yeah. So let's kind of get into the differences. Like uh, the the original, the one that's you can find on on Funimation and Hulu. Unfortunately, Hulu doesn't have a dub, which makes me very sad. I know. <laughs> because this is one of the few shows out there that's so much better dubbed than subbed. So uh, so let's give an overview of Rosario Vampire the anime is. Yeah, let's um, start with the anime first. 
All right, it is fan service the anime. For those Pretty who don't much. know, fan service is a term where they have like panty shots, cleavage shots, and all that shit. <laughs> um, oh, basically, it's just a, a comedy. It's about a kid named Skune Ono. He's the best character in the anime. Yeah, I know. For those Skune's for amazing. for my for my, ca- for my for my uh, viewers that are my friends in my group who hate Skune, you know what? Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> Skune is hilarious. Dude, and, and uh, he has one of the best voice actors too. Like Todd Havercoin is, is amazing. Um, yeah, Todd Havercoin, there yeah. we go. He's he's amazing. It, but it, it just just at first I was like I don't know if I really like the, this because when I first heard him I'm like I don't know if the voice fits the character but then like going forward it just it fits him so perfectly and just the the character in the anime is freaking hilarious. In the manga, he's a badass. Yeah, <laughs> which which we'll get to in a minute, but it's just. The story itself is pretty interesting. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Rosario Vampire is about a, a boy who flunks his entrance exam into high school. So his if parents he might, are, He's human. He, he's human. <laughs> and his parents... Oh, his dad's drunk one night. He's walking down the, the side street and finds an envelope yeah. that, with an acceptance letter. Oh, no, letter. no. It's, remember, it's an, it's an exorcist-looking guy who... "Quote unquote," accidentally drops an envelope invitation to a high school, <laughs> just randomly. And his dad, and, and and I remember just the scene of his mom running up and, and hugging the dad. So he's so amazing. It's like, oh my god. And then uh, he goes to the school, and oh yeah, uh, there's Kyoko. I think that's her name, right? The cousin. You're the cousin, yeah. And she was like, all like, you know, oh um. I did some research on some- this. <laughs> yeah, there's some research in the school, and it cuts out, and he enters through a tunnel, and he brings him to a world where uh, he's in a different world. That's all I'll give right now. And then uh, he's walking through the woods, realizes the bus isn't coming back, creepy-ass woods, and this vampire uh, chick rides a bike and crashes into him. Now, I know this is anime logic, but that was real life. This guy would be crippled. Yeah, especially where I hit him, <laughs> dude. Just like the <laughs> watching the the picture, well, the the video, like the the anime the other night, I was rewatching it, and because I knew we were gonna be talking about this, and I just seen the bike crash into his back was friggin' hilarious. Just see his back arch in a certain way, like he got taken out. It's like, almost like a Rob Liefeld comic in the nineties where proportions <laughs> do not exist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my god. So. It's it's just it. Pre- this is pretty much a comedy with some drama thrown here and there, but mostly a comedy. And I mean, it, I would classify it as a romance, but then again, it's hard to speculate because okay, so here's the main plot. Uh, Skune is a normal human who ends up at a school filled with monsters, and there's like I want to say, hold on, uh, <laughs> Outer Mocha, Inner Mocha, <laughs> Misere, Kumaru, Yukri, and like six six chicks. Well, five chicks, but the sixth one's kind of like a side character. Yeah. Um, like and, and five chicks who just, who little just sister want him. Too. Mocha's little sister too. Oh, Kokoa. Oh, uh, I have issues with her in the second season. She's not that good, but in the manga, she's better. Yeah. But we'll get to the manga in a few minutes. But all right. So this dude has like five really hot chicks, with the exception of a lolly. And if my boy Matt is listening, yes, uh, it is your favorite character. We get it. <laughs> you like you like lollies, Matt. We're gonna have to have a discussion when we meet up next. Yeah, FBI Chan will be knocking on your door shortly. Yeah, I know. But he consistently says that they're all friends. Well, Kumaru is a succubus, so she just wants his dick. And we figure out later on that she actually likes him. Uh, outer Mocha is the outer shell of the vampire Mocha, and she's really nice to him and really wants to confess feelings, but. She's scared, and so is he. Wow, who would have guessed? Uh, <laughs> Inamoka cool. is a badass. Yeah, I think Inamoka is just probably one of the most baddest vampire chicks in anime. To be honest with you, next to uh, Sarah's Victoria, of course. But oh yeah, um, let me see. Oh, Misery Shiryuki, my favorite character. She is a stalker. Uh, it's hard to describe what her species is because the manga like displays it two different times for two different species. The first one is an abdominal snow woman, and the other one's a snow fairy. Yeah, I'm gonna go with snow fairy because it sounds cuter. Yeah, and the hashtag other, weeb. And <laughs> and the other two characters are pretty much witches. I mean, I mean, um, the the, the, yeah, the lolly's Ruby. a witch, and and Ruby. Yeah, the other character, Ruby, who I think has some of the funniest flashback scenes I've seen in anime. 
Well, it's a oh really God. long story. Yeah. And if for those who don't know, if you watch it and uh, which, when she said that's a really long story, the running gag is everybody talks over her. Yeah. If you um if you actually listen, she starts to display what happens in the last episodes and breaks the fourth law on one. Yep. It, it, it pretty much like towards the the end of it too, like towards the end of the second season, they actually go through the, a montage of, of what she meant by it. <laughs> it was such a long of why it was a long story. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> which is funny. All right, so the first season follows all the way up follows the manga but the second season does but it mostly is just filler or just comedy like do you remember that one episode where they literally had three segments of like a what if story like you know the point of view of a uh, said character as all the girls wear long skirts or yes you know yes. what's the were- werewolf game been doing the whole time yeah <laughs> i mean those episodes are mad funny Yes, they are. Because it was funny, like, the long skirt episode, everybody, because Ruby's just like, everybody needs to wear long skirts. And then, you know, you realize that uh, Ruby wears a skirt because she's got clear underwear. Yeah, yeah she, <laughs> she, she has lacy black underwear, which is yeah. like, like <laughs> which I thought was funny. He was just like, yeah, you're the most lewd one out of every, out of everyone. Yeah. But, all right, so let's get on the differences between the manga and the, the anime. Because right. it's actually pretty huge differences. The manga is much more serious. It has dark tone, dark tone, uh, dark tone themes in it. Sorry for my stutter. Um, what else can I think of? Oh, it has a much more serious plot going on. Some of the episodes in the anime are mismatched compared to the manga. Like, do you remember the fox uh, spirit de- deity they had to verse? Yes. Misery didn't show up yet. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, she shows up literally the next volume afterwards. It's got some, like, not really fan service, but it's got, like, a lot of, like, oh, Scooney, which one are you going to choose out of us girls? But later on, he chooses uh, a said person. I won't tell which which one. Um, let me see. Oh, uh, Scooney becomes a wicked badass. And this is not really spoilers because, again, uh, it was going to happen. He basically becomes half vampire. Wow, he's a human in a school full of monsters, something's going to happen. Yeah, And what happens to him is that he becomes a half-vampire, but these are labeled as either half-breeds or ghouls. Ghouls in this universe are people that are basically half-breeds. He's half-vampire, half-human, so he'll basically lose control sometimes and have, like, a... Not, like, an entity, but, like, something else, like, completely possess him. Yeah. Uh, he, he, like... I think it was, like, he choked Kumaru so hard he almost broke her neck. Damn. <laughs> yeah, and I think he backhanded uh, Mocha so hard that she fucking, like, he almost fractured her cheekbone. Jesus. Yep, so see, like you said, a lot more darker tones compared to the Scoone, Mocha, Scoone, Mocha. Even though those are mad funny. Yeah, they are really funny. <laughs> there are a lot of running gags, but some people who think that this anime is pervy, I mean, say it, I don't care. But then again, this anime is just, it's in my top five because it has nostalgia reasons for me. Yeah, it, and I think it's, it's funny it's as cool. hell. It's, it's definitely in, in in my top ten, definitely, because it it was just it's just a great anime. It's just funny as hell. I I personally I personally thoroughly enjoy like like when it comes to anime like comedies over the action stuff because I, I I like a good laugh over the crazy action and whatnot. So like, um, but. For anyone who hasn't hasn't seen the anime, I mean, it's old as hell now. I mean, it's what like ten years old at least, ten fifteen years nah, it's old. That's twelve. It's two thousand eight. Yeah, so go check it out. It's on on Funimation along with Steins Gate as well and and Naruto. So go go check it out. Um, so and, uh, Mizuru Shiryuki's my waifu. <laughs> She's the best girl in anime. Well, besides Ananishino uh, Ananishinome, which is from another one, which. Can we talk about that real quick? Because we can Absolute, shorten the about Absolutely. It. Oh I my mean, god. So, Shimonetta is, without a doubt, one of the funniest animes I think I've ever seen. <laughs> oh my god. It's just fantastic. It is just really f- fantastic anime. <laughs> uh, Doug, why don't you do a, a concept of what the anime is about? Because it is fucking. The plot's just funny as it is. So, the plot itself. So, the anime is about a world, specifically Japan, where. Any indecent acts, dirty jokes, nudity, pornography, is banned, completely banned by the by the by the Council of Moral Ethics and Codes and Child Raising. So, so some along the lines of that. I probably don't have it correct, but I'm sure one of our viewers will, will as usual, correct me. 
about it. But uh, and what happens is that this is this a gentleman, and he's his father was a what's called a dirty joke terrorist, and oh pretty God. much yeah. a, a guy who runs around and yelling swear words, throwing panties all over the place and dirty pictures because you know swearing is is illegal, and, and you actually have these which is fucked up because they have these collars, and these wristbands they have these cr- this crazy like technology on it, but it also tracks like what you're saying. Well, you can't say any, any naughty words. You can't watch pornography, nothing like that, because th- th- they can tell. So it's so funny about the school too, because like kids don't know what sex is, because sex ed isn't taught anymore. No, so which provides more funny stuff for the the main characters. Yeah. He's just like, I heard you be sick your thing in a girl's thing that it falls off, or even better, like a monster grows out of it. I was just like, damn, these kids are like seventeen. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what's going on. Yeah, but we have to talk about White White Peak, the best character. Oh well, we'll get to White Peak in a second. But uh, what happened to this, the kid is that he gets pretty much um, blackmailed into helping out the 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 main heroine, uh, friggin' <laughs> Blue Snow, aka the student council president, vice president of a school, who the president is on a on a. Um, freaking. I'm an issue, no man. The most who girl goes from the most pure girl in an, in anime to the most lewd girl in, in anime history. I think. Basically, well, I'll well, give a I'll give a a quick overview. All right, so this girl <laughs> is very pure. It's like you know, it seems like she's like completely Catholic religious type of deal. And what accidentally happens? The main character accidentally kisses her. And she like blushes, and she like absolutely loves the kiss, but she takes it way too far. <laughs> like he goes over. Um, hold on. Tell oh my god! Oh my scene. god! I'm I'm about to. So go basically, right the first the first night is that he um he tries to go to sleep, and she goes into his apartment, puts her soaking wet panties over his head, and legitly like bangs him without like you know not full on like banging but, but you know what I almost mean. at the point and it's funny because all they were trying to do was the, the the two main characters were trying to hunt down his stalker turns out it's Anna which no one expected besides the viewers who are watching her behavior <laughs> that shit was mad funny she like ripped his zipper off with her teeth <laughs> <laughs> and yeah like uh, they're in gym class and all of a sudden this is the scene that uh, my buddy was talking about she like literally tackles him and she goes, oh, I want it. And he's just like, Anna, what are you doing? And all of a sudden, she just puts her teeth on a zipper and just rips it off. Like, completely rips it off. And he screams. I mean, if that was me, I'm like, all right, what's, you know, you're already that far. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he screams like a girl, too, which is even, which is funny as hell. Because this, this is supposed to be, like, the most, most um, like, pure person in the whole entire school. <laughs> and she's running around doing this because she's, like, love crazy. And horned up to like <laughs> level thirty. It was fucked. It's it was funny because the main character had like the biggest crush on her. Yeah. Like, and it was like, oh, that's the girl like I want to be with. And all of a sudden, like first kiss and everything, and boom, that happens. And he's just like, he's like, yo, I'm afraid to go near. <laughs> oh my god! It got like it. It was so funny. It it was so funny. Like, that that anime just takes so many funny um. Like definitely not anime for kids at all. It is. Oh my god, fucked. we have to talk about that one scene though. So basically, um, they're all in the student council, and she brings cookies. Oh my god! And she uh starts handing them out, and she uh she goes, "But I made a special batch for you." And he goes, "Oh really?" And then he chews one. He goes, "Hmm, something different about these." He goes, "Do you like it?" And he goes, "Yeah, I think they're really good." He goes, "She goes because it has my love nectar in it." And he stops eating it, like, horrified. <laughs> and just looks at her and he goes, I made those cookies with my love nectar just for you. The most, like, rapiest face on the planet. And, and, she, and she did do it to, uh, to uh, it was actually not all of them. It was just to um, the vice president and him had the cookies. <laughs> so the vice president is like, supposed to be like her best friend and on top of it all is actually Blue Snow, the person who she's trying to hunt down. So they both ate the cookies with their love nectar and it was like, what the hell? <laughs> oh my god, and this White Peak which is basically, he's not, everybody's assuming he's a villain but he's not. That's just nuts. Dude, he, he he's off the wall. IMA, yeah. Her, her name, the, main, the other main heroine's called, his name is IMA. Oh my god. So she's my favorite character is... in, the, in the anime. 
White Peak is literally a guy that has like girls panties all over him and everybody's just he's only there to steal girls panties and he never washes it and he lets them stink. It's so disgusting but so funny cuz his like his slongs hanging out have the <laughs> and they have that stupid worm thing or over his long. <laughs> I know, like when he gets when he gets uh somebody like kicks him and he goes onto the the camera where it's on live television and his slong's like on the camera and it fans out to the family and this little girl's just like, Mommy, what's that? And she's like, Cover your eyes <laughs> <laughs> That whole anime is just like It's I, just ridiculous. Oh my god, it's just so funny. It's just enemies like that I thoroughly enjoy. Like another one I I, I personally love is uh, Defrag. If you guys have ever seen that one, uh, it's not as lewd, but it's pretty funny. Yo, yeah, someone be saying White Peak is uh, trash. No, absolutely not. <laughs> but yeah. Oh Jesus Christ, fucking <laughs> Shimonetta. Uh, but. Yeah, um, I mean, I guess we can go into the next topic, which would be our last topic to discuss today, because I know this one might take a little bit of time. So, uh, and that one is Erased. Oh, easy, one of my top five favorites. Yeah, I have to say, this this, this is another one that, that you told me about, and I didn't get, I, I unfortunately not seen the last two episodes, but I know exactly what happens, because I had to read ahead, and the little story behind that was, I kind of lost my hulu for, for a bit. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Poor Leroy. Yeah, so I didn't get to finish it. When I finally got it back, I was like, ah, I already know what happened. So, but this anime is just fantastic. Just a w- extremely well written anime. Why don't you give them the plot of it, Sprinkles? Basically, I forget the main character's name. I really do. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen it. It's been, I think, I think a year. But it's this is one of those animes that really, really make you think. It's a little mix of time travel involved in it, a murder mystery, and it's just a fantastic start to, to it. But um, as soon all as right, so it's uh, Satoru. I want to say it is. I say you pronounce it. Satoru is um, he is a guy that lives his average day, you know, normal life, and apparently uh, there's like I don't know how it like exactly starts. I think I spent so long, but basically he comes home. His apartment and his mom's dead and the killer that they describe about a kidnapping a bunch of little girls is still out there and he has the ability to like basically time travel whenever he sees like i think it's like a butterfly yeah how it works is he can time travel underneath extreme stress was kind of how they explained it and uh what happened in the beginning was if i remember correctly was that his him and mom were talking about a murder that happened when he was a kid i guess his mom kind of started to realize who it was and that's why she got killed and he he walked in to find his mom dead and he got pinned the he got pinned on him and this guy was like a pizza worker he was he was, he was like, not a pizza worker he was like a, a pizza delivery guy that's his job being in his 30s and he's working with this other chick who's like i think 18 or 19 years old and she's like his only friend when this all happens he's like hiding with her or whatever and then he he time travels like out of nowhere and he figures out he can do that because of, of extreme stress. He, tra- he travels back to the consciousness of himself when he was, he was what, 10 years old? Yeah. And a bunch of kids in his neighborhood were getting killed, including this one girl um, who, who was never found, I think. Oh, she was found, but she, she was found dead. And it's just the last yeah. in, in the street of killing. So his, this whole anime is just him trying to stop the killing of this one girl. So it's... It's it's just such a well written anime and just su- such a well done anime. It, it was fantastic. I just can't keep saying that enough. It was just so good. But I mean, some people will get the villain right away, but it doesn't really like you know mean it's bad. It's just that you just want to see like is they gonna catch that person? Yeah, because and also too, you know, I th- I think if I remember correctly, uh, each time he goes back, it, it ends a little bit differently, like. A different person dies or like the girl still dies and then someone else dies too you know it, it's kind of like one of those Steins gate instances instances where he's trying to fix it and it takes a little bit of time for it to come back if, if i if i remember correctly take some time to actually get it right and the way he gets it right is kind of horrible and sad but at the same time too you know that's that just last how, how episode is like really good oh yeah it's fantastic that episode like wraps everything up 
I mean, there are some loose ends, but it's not like, you know, something completely fucking stupid and grandiose. No. The way they wrap up this show is what I've read and what I've we've talked about is like off off the year before, you know, not because we don't want to give away spoilers. Was the way they wrapped up was it was all nice it was all nice and neat in a bow. I've only seen it that well wrapped up in one one other anime called Charlotte. Like in that one oh my god. Uh, Charlotte would be the anime I talk about this week during the big podcast. So it's it's a fan it's also on Hulu and and uh Funimation as well. But um yeah. Just this was just like this one took me by surprise too. Uh, I didn't expect it to be this good, off, like off the bat too. Like it wasn't like a Steins Gate was a slow burn. It was like literally off the bat. Like y- you actually got like invested in the character, especially the girl who who's 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 on, who's on on the screen right now. You get invested in her pretty quickly. Like how bad her life was, very quickly. And the, the teacher, the teachers were and the teacher was interesting too, um, and and the mom as well. But it's it's just a great, great anime. Just great to, to see. Um, actually, I think the so some of the voice actors, the, the voice actor for, for him as a kid, it was actually in uh, Persona Five as well too, from if I remember correctly. But that's getting a little off topic. Just something just popped in my head. I had to say, but yeah, the whole cast was was fantastic. Done. I mean, I I think everyone was voice acted great in that. The animation was beautiful in that too. But yeah. Yeah, anything else you, that you want to say about, about Erased? Mm, uh, hmm. Not that I can think of. It's just really good. <laughs> yeah, it's just a great anime. I actually did a... Uh, that you, theme song is good. Yes. Um, we're actually going to end off the episode in, in a few minutes about this. And actually, uh, the, the ending theme is actually Amelie, a YouTuber, actually did a cover of both the intro song and the outro song and slammed into, into one song it's actually pretty good uh, that's why I'm using it for our outro but um so other than that like um, is there any other enemies you've seen recently that you have really piqued your interest or in the last couple of years that you would definitely recommend the viewers to, uh, home to watch oh, less uh, Boko rather. no Pico is one no <laughs> <laughs> uh, alright on a serious note Hmm. Let me see. Again, it's been a while since I've seen like you know, anime. Yeah. Um, for short ones. Uh, I mean, Helsing Ultimate's one. I haven't entirely finished it. Finished it. Yeah, I mean, we, we could probably talk about that for a few minutes too. I mean, that that's not the great one too. I mean, the whole story. There's it's a different version of Dracula, pretty much, just being told kind of differently. It's pretty freaking good. I have to it's say. Got the big titty police girl. <laughs> the big titty police girl. Well. <laughs> Shit was so funny. Yeah. Especially the of the abridged. Yes, and the bridge uh, team put force. Your fa- put my head between your boobs. boobs. Yes. Now uh, put my <laughs> head between your legs. Oh, damn it. Yes. Yeah, my friend. I should have known you wouldn't keep that inside. <laughs> you would keep that inside. Oh my god. Uh, you know what? We, we can probably end, end the podcast off of. Um, what is an a? Can you name two animes that everyone else loves that you don't? Uh, one is Death Note. I think it's absolutely trash, but that's just me. Like, everybody has their own opinions, but I just think Death Note's really boring. Plot's kind of predictable. Everybody's like, oh my god, this plot's so complex. I'm like, not really. A guy gets a potato chip and they focus on it? Like, no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't think Death Note's that great either. I've seen it. I, I, oh, I, and uh, probably Dragon Ball, the series, because it just needs to start with a big dick energy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just always like, oh, I have more power. New form, new hair color, new, new hairstyle. It's like I'm watching a L'Oreal commercial every single time I see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but but mind you, uh, it isn't horrible anime. I mean, I, yeah, if you're looking for plot, it's not the place to go. <laughs> no. If you're looking I, for fight scenes that have the same four frames, go ahead and watch it. I remember growing up, like that was the anime that got me into. They started me off with Dragon Ball series, and looking back on it. Um, 
it went from Dragon Ball to Gun and Wing to Rurouni Kenshin for me. And I remember watching. I like I go back now and, I, and I'll watch every once in a while. Like I used to watch my stepson, and it is, yeah, big dick energy hardcore all day long. It's definitely like it, Goku is a really bad protagonist to me. He's not that special. When he gets a new form, like oh great, he's somehow gonna beat a guy, but then another guy's gonna be more powerful than him. And that's how Dragon Ball works. Yeah, the plot's really predictable, but this that, that they, they use the same formula they use in the CADs and it works, and people buy into it. And I gave up after the Buu saga. I didn't see anything particularly great. I watched some things of the Dragon Ball Super, and I still wasn't I very watched impressed. Super and I wasn't impressed at all. I was just like, so when does it get exciting? It's just one of those things where it's like, it, it's definitely not as great as, you know, other, other animes. It's not as great as people put it up to be. I mean, mind you, it is a staple in anime. We, I'm not going to bash it for that. I mean, Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball series is one of the biggest. There's other animes that are better. Yeah, but it's <laughs> it's the best anime for, if you want to show people what anime is starting off, you start with the Dragon Ball series, I think, because that gets people into it. You people so what anime could be, and then you show what it really is afterwards. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, have you ever seen like you know Steins Gate? <laughs> yeah. Or or you could be one of those horrible veteran weebs and go, have you seen Boku no Pico? <laughs> yeah, I was saying like that movie that's great too. I I mean I recommend it ten out of ten. I've yeah. seen all episodes multiple times. <laughs> Naked with lotion. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I didn't have lotion. We were out, so I used the next best thing, my hand. <laughs> oh my god uh, now it, the first Broly movie I grew with when the soldier the first Broly movie was really good the History of Trunks I think is the best thing the Dragon Ball ever put out in oh, my yeah opinion. I almost forgot about something what's that uh, another anime that got me into anime was the original Pokemon Indigo League I think I think a lot of people get, got in with that too I mean the original Pokemon is I know my friend Darnell was listening. He told me, oh, there's other ones that are better. But to me, like, the Indigo League is probably the best because it has a theme song everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. Its animation is really good for a 90s anime, despite, like, what people might say. And it rose a lot of popularity. Yeah. It's probably the, it's the longest running, or well, one of the longest running anime because of how much it there is. Yeah, it, it's 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 almost in line with like One Piece and, and Fairy Tail and Dragon Ball. It's almost in line with them now, but but not like you know, case closed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Case closed is something else. I never watched that at all. Like case closed is one. Those one of the ones I kind of missed. I'll give you a hint. Ready? After four hundred episodes, they stopped doing it dubbed, and it's like a thousand plus. Jesus Christ! I'm all set with that. Well, <laughs> Oh, I mean, uh, people say it's good, but you know, it's just really, really long. All right, before we end up the podcast, um, what is your preferred version of, of watching anime? You like it subbed or dubbed? Me? Yes. Uh, dubbed because I I have too much ADHD to pay attention to subtitles. <laughs> yeah, that's that's me too. If someone's talking Japanese and I see, I'm like, all right, we need subtitles, and all of a sudden something grandiose happens, I'm like trying to rewind it. <laughs> Yeah, I have the issue, like, one of my favorite ones going on right now I've been watching is uh, Kaguya-sama, Love is War, and they'll be making it dubbed very soon, but I watched the whole first season subbed, and I literally had to stop and, like, look up, like, like read and look a couple of times, because they would go so fast, but... I mean, there's only one anime that I really like subbed. Well, it's only subbed. I love Kuroko's Basketball. It's really, really good. Uh, yeah. I recommend it to people. People who don't, everybody's like, oh, it's a basketball anime. Like, dude, it's more than that. It's like super hardcore epic. Yeah. I remember you showed me what the first four episodes of that. It, it was pretty good. Like, like it's not, it's like they put basketball on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> they like, everybody has their own ability. Basketball. Dude, they, everybody has their own ability on the court. Everybody's got their own personalities. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go towards the, the end, end of our show for today. Um, so, well, not q and Fuck that stupid fucking thing. There we go. So, coming next time, I'm going to have, um, on Thursday this week, I'm going to have my good friend, our, oh, our good friend Lobo on to talk about the Fate series and, and the Tight Moon Properties, which is a very, very long running, uh, you know, company with tons and tons and tons of, uh, 
content they put out in their own little universe, which is absolutely fucking insane, I have to say. Yeah, rabbit hole is the better word for it. But um, also to... Uh, to uh, wait, I didn't do my announcement. All right, so tomorrow, the winner, speaking of Dragon Ball, the winner for tomorrow is Dragon Ball Kakarot. That's the anime, well, the anime game I'll be playing tomorrow night is Dragon Ball Kakarot. So that one. Can you guess what I'll be playing? What? <laughs> Final Fantasy Fifteen. <laughs> what a guess! I'm so addicted. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, that'll be the game I'll be playing tomorrow on the same time on this on Twitch. Uh, I'll be doing that then. Then on Thursday, I will be having my special guest Lobo on to talk about the Fate series and Tight Moon properties. Uh, and then on Friday, I'll be streaming um persona 5 royal is the last uh game i'm going to stream this week for our anime week because persona 5 did have an anime so i qualified it so yo i'm gonna watch uh the final fantasy 15 anime yeah you'll let me know how, how that is maybe you can let us know if you watch before saturday which saturday is our big podcast which we'll be talking about all kinds of things animes with with lobo zach sprinkles and myself our inner um, week gets released Yes, the 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 interweaves will be released violently, but I'm gonna to try to do two two podcasts of my own a week, um, if not one about a certain topics and whatnot. I'm sure, sprinkles will be a reoccurring guest on there, especially Probably. when we get other people too. Especially when we get in, well next week. <laughs> next week, I'm thinking about doing comic book week. Oh, so so I'm pretty that sure might that you. might be a five hour podcast just us two. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I I think you and I will do a. Uh, DC comic one together. A bat. We'll probably do a Bat Family podcast sometime next week. All right, sounds good. I got to talk about my favorite Bat Family memory. Yeah, Bat- <laughs> Batman Beyond. Yeah, that's the best one. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, that's pretty much all to me for this week's podcast. I mean, I don't really have really much else to say. Um, but thank you guys for listening and watching. Um, and we'll see you guys on. I'll see you guys tomorrow night when I play Dragon Ball Kakarot. And I'll see you guys on Thursday. We talk about the Fate series, so please join us then, dirty bastards. You got anything else you want to say, Sprinkles? Where can we find you? In my room. Uh, <laughs> I'm really doing nothing. On Amino. And yeah, that's about it. Discord yeah. in the server. Yeah, Discord in the server. Just add him on the server, and uh, yeah. You'll see a picture of... Uh, Cloud and Tifa kissing because I'm a mega hardcore weave shipper of Tifa Cloud. You Eris fans are boring. <laughs> Pretty much. But uh, yeah, we'll see you guys all later. You guys have a good night. Stay safe out there and don't fuck around, all right? Yeah, don't want a Chinese. If you open it as a cough, return it. <laughs> Oh